Good evening. My daddy called my job one day and said, may I speak to Christina? My boss at that, at that time, her name was Christine. She said, hello. He says, Chris, you want some hot dogs for dinner tonight? She said, he said, Chris, this your daddy. And she said, no, this is Christine, not Christina. She said, I can ask her. And she started to laugh. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And so she asked me, and of course I wanted some hot dogs. My name is Christina Wilson, and I am one of Norman Lynch's daughters. As we gather here today to speak on his life, I hope that I display to you all a little bit of the laugh that he brought over the years to our lives. Norman came into my life when I was three years old, and there were times that I made him wonder if he should stay, and even told him to leave with my famous, you ain't my daddy line. Today, I'm going to speak about a man who loved my mother unconditionally. A man who accepted my sister and I as his own. A man who fought for every breath until God blessed him with new lungs. Norman and my mother, Teresa, met in New Jersey when I was three years old and my sister was six years old. But before I get to the time when we blessed his life, let's discuss his life before us. Can you imagine his face right now? <laughs> Norman was one of 36 from the late Peter Lynch. Between his mother and father, Norman was one of five. Norman was the oldest of the five, which was Norman, Terrence, Kim, Orlando, and Tina Lynch. Norman graduated from Montclair High School when he was 18 years old. Norman loved music so much that he thought that he was going to be a DJ. Norman also loved dancing. Back then it was like pop locking. Norman had a lot of family in the area in Montclair, East Orange, in New Jersey, Newark, like all over New Jersey. They always danced and his brothers DJed at parties as they got older. They turned into true ladies men. His father moved to North Carolina with his new wife shortly after the passing of his mother, where Kim and Tina continued to grow up with them. Norman and his brothers would visit. Little did Norman know that he would transition to North Carolina with the love of his life, Teresa. North Carolina was a slower pace for Norman and he liked it when he eventually moved down there. Everyone that worked with Norman knew that he would show up every day, he was diligent, and that they would enjoy themselves with him because he always had a joke. Norman would find himself trying to learn how to parent and just be a provider in a new area. And he struggled, but he, he, he managed to meet the test over time. After moving to North Carolina, he got a decent job at Blue Cross and Blue Shield in the mailroom where he worked for about 10 years. He had numerous part-time jobs like Upton's, Burger King, Kohl's, and warehouses. When Norman left Blue Cross and Blue Shield, he went to Mohawk Industries where, let's just say, a big boom ended his roles. Over the years, we watched Norman work hard, and when he was able to tell Teresa she didn't have to work, it was the proudest moment for him to say, your mother doesn't have to work. I got it. I seen him love my mom in so many ways, but that day I seen him become more of a provider than I had ever seen or understood growing up. One day at Mohawk, Norman was riding his forklift and somehow a cord wrapped around the wheel of his forklift while he was riding down the aisle. And it pulled out the gas and he got off as fast as he could and he tried to like push it back in, but he couldn't. And all he remembers is boom and just everything blew up and there was smoke everywhere and he just tried to run out as fast as he could, but I think he inhaled too much. That started the flare-up of his sarcoidosis of the lungs. 
um, not shortly after he was in desperate need of a double lung transplant. Norman's lungs were constantly collapsing and he was on oxygen 24 hours a day. We were in shock at how fast everything happened. Ambulances and hospital visits became the normal routine for him. He would be on the transplant list for a full year before he would get his lungs. But when he got his lungs, he was back to himself. Sanaya, which is my daughter, um, his granddaughter, and her papa had a strong bond at times. I knew he fought a little harder for her. So when he got them, the hard part had just begun. Norman was a new man with new with a new engine. Although they were used parts, they gave him a second chance at the life that he needed. And he did not take it for granted. He ate his street meat, which was doctors of doctor approved, but to us it was still street meat, deer and rabbit. He traveled and spent more time with his grandchildren and the love of his life. I know there is not enough time to truly display the man who raised me, loved me, wiped my tears, and whose favorite lines were family laughs still to this day. Through my adolescence to my adult years to motherhood, he has been there. I have given you a glimpse of what a great father can do for a young girl and a single parent, which changed our lives for the better.